British Royal Navy's decision to field the Dragonfire laser weapon on its Type 45 destroyers by 2027 marks one of the most significant shifts in modern naval warfare since the introduction of guided missiles. For years, energy weapons were spoken of as distant, experimental technologies, fascinating in theory but limited by power demands, cooling systems, and battlefield practicality. Now, with the Dragonfire entering frontline service, the United Kingdom is signaling that the age of operational laser weapons has arrived, and it is arriving faster than many expected. For NATO, and especially for Europe, this represents not just a technological breakthrough but a strategic response to the changing character of aerial threats and the escalating cost of missile-based defense. What makes the Dragonfire particularly disruptive is not simply that it works, but that it works at tactically meaningful ranges with extraordinary accuracy. Early trials at the Hebrides range proved that the system can track and burn through small, fast-moving drones traveling over 650 km per hour, achieving pinpoint hits with submillimetric precision at distances around 1 km. This level of accuracy is not just impressive, it fundamentally changes the economics of naval defense. Today's destroyers may be forced to expend missiles costing hundreds of thousands of pounds to destroy drones purchased for only a few thousand. With Dragonfire, the cost of each engagement drops to roughly 10 pounds. This is not an incremental improvement, it is a complete rewriting of the cost equation that governs modern air defense. The timing of Britain's decision is no accident. Conflicts in Eastern Europe and the Middle East have shown that mass drone attacks, loitering munitions, and small unmanned surface vehicles can overwhelm even the best defended ships if they arrive in high enough numbers. Traditional missile systems like Sea Viper offer spectacular capability but are unsustainable for prolonged defense against large, cheap drone swarms. The Royal Navy knows that its combat vessels, especially the Type 45 destroyers, which protect Britain's carrier strike groups, need more than kinetic interceptors to survive future engagements. They need a layered defense system in which missiles, guns, electronic warfare tools, and now lasers work together. Dragonfire becomes the ultra-low cost tier in that layered shield. Yet the technology behind Dragonfire is just as compelling as its tactical utility. The 50kW class laser relies on coherent beam combining, merging output from multiple fiber laser modules into one powerful, sharply focused beam operating in the shortwave infrared. This ensures both extended reach and high beam quality allowing the weapon to deliver lethal energy to a target almost instantly. Combined with advanced electro-optical sensors, precision tracking, and high-speed beam steering mirrors, the system can switch between targets in seconds, something no missile can do. And because it uses no ammunition, a ship equipped with Dragonfire is limited only by its power generation and cooling capacity. In sustained drone swarm attacks, that could make the difference between survival and destruction. The Type 45 destroyers themselves are an ideal platform for the first operational deployment. Their integrated electric propulsion and advanced combat systems were designed with growth capacity in mind. Now, that capacity is being used to integrate energy-based weapons years ahead of most European navies. HMS Diamond, currently undergoing a major refit in Portsmouth, will be the first to carry the laser during prototype C trials, with full integration expected across the class by 2027. This accelerated timeline indicates clear strategic urgency, driven by real-world threats and the need to remain ahead of adversaries who increasingly rely on low-cost, high-volume tools to erode Western technological advantages. Dragonfire is not without limitations. Weather remains a factor, heavy rain, fog, and atmospheric disturbances can reduce its effective range. At present, the weapon is optimized for short to medium-range defense, roughly 1 to 2 kilometers under ideal conditions. It cannot yet defeat hypersonic or high-velocity anti-ship missiles. But these drawbacks are widely recognized by engineers and planners, and the system was never meant to replace missiles outright. Instead, it frees them. By engaging drones, loitering munitions, and small boats with a laser instead of a multi-million pound missile stockpile, 
the Type 45s can preserve their Sea Viper interceptors for high-end threats. Future upgrades, more power, improved cooling, better integration with radar fire control, will likely expand its engagement envelope further. This development also carries major industrial and political significance. A £316 million contract ensures not only the production of operational systems but also a long-term investment in British high-tech manufacturing. Companies like MBDA UK, Kinetic, and Leonardo will support hundreds of skilled jobs across Stevenage, Malvern, and Edinburgh. Meanwhile, other European nations, most of which are still evaluating demonstrator-level laser technologies, will be watching closely. The UK's progress will influence NATO doctrine, procurement strategies, and international defence collaboration for years to come. By moving first, Britain positions itself as a leader in an emerging weapons sector that will only grow more critical as drone warfare evolves. Perhaps the most important takeaway is that Dragonfire transforms the way warships think about endurance. For decades, naval commanders have balanced firepower against magazine depth, how many missiles can the ship carry, and how quickly can those missiles be replenished. A laser disrupts that logic. As long as the ship has power, it has ammunition. This offers a profound advantage in long-duration missions far from logistical support, especially in contested regions where supply lines may be vulnerable. The Royal Navy's future destroyers and frigates, such as the Type 83 and Type 26, will almost certainly be designed from the keel up with energy weapons in mind. In many ways, Dragonfire symbolizes a turning point. It shows that Western navies are adapting to a world where threats are cheaper, faster, and more numerous than ever before. It shows that energy weapons are no longer theoretical, they are becoming routine components of modern fleets. And it shows that military innovation does not always mean bigger, heavier, or more explosive. Sometimes, the most effective weapon is a precisely focused beam of light costing less than a takeaway meal. As installation begins over the next two years and operational deployment draws closer, the Dragonfire program will become a test case for how laser weapons influence naval tactics, alliance strategy, and global perceptions of military power. The Royal Navy is taking a bold step, one that places Britain at the forefront of energy-based defense. If the system performs at sea as well as it has in trials, Dragonfire will not just change how destroyers defend themselves, it will change the expectations of naval warfare in the 21st century.